just to let you know, all these reactions are recorded live over on Twitch. So if you want to pop on over and see me live react to things, click the link in the description down below and give me a little follow. It's free and it massively helps out. Now, to the video. So this one was sent in by Froster. Now it's, I built a surgery robot. Let's give it a go. Da Vinci Surgical System is the da most key. a streamlined surgical experience for minimally invasive surgery available surgery. in the world. Oh, oh. I could build that. That didn't look like a great. Hey, how's everyone's global health crisis going? My house is on full goddamn quarantine, and I'll probably be dead in a week anyway. Not from the oh, virus, no. Like an electrocution accident or something. Oh, it's actually fair, giving me a lot fair of free play. Time. And what better way to spend free time right now than to help the medical industry? Now, I can't do any chemistry or biology or like body stuff, yuck, but I can do robotics. And let me tell you, those Da Vinci surgery robotics rat bastards are ripping hospitals off. Look at this, $2 million for one shitty robot. They can spend that on a couple hundred bandages or like one ambulance ride in the US. We can build a better surgery <laughs> robot for a lot less. Come on. The biggest flaw in Da Vinci's design is that it relies on these clunky, slow robotic arms for movement. Say you're operating on a patient's foot. He starts screaming out in pain. You gotta get up to his face, smack him around a little bit, make him shut up. Good fucking luck with these robotic arms. They're slow as shit and they don't have any travel distance. Oh, this is great. Get him out the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table. Hey, look, it's past Michael. You know it took him five whole days to 3D model and build one rail carriage? What a dipshit. Hey man, shut the fuck up. This shit's hard. You little bitch. I'm the narrator. I'm like, God, you can't kill me. This is great. Here's what the final carriage looks like. You see, it uses wheel bearings to travel up and down the slots in this aluminum rod. But Michael, you're just gonna use your hand to make it move? No, you're stupid and I hate you. For power, we're using a brushless DC motor and an O drive to turn this into kind of like a brushless servo motor. Do I know what that means? Absolutely fucking not. I've never <laughs> done this before. What I do know is someone told my voice track. <laughs> what I do know is someone told me this would be fast and very accurate. And all you have to do to put it in is This guy's really, really good. I forgot to record all the sound effects, okay? Give me a fucking break. Lit. I got the motor very professionally hooked up to the driver board, which is hooked up- Like the like way he delivers the video okay, so this is- this is the like, calibration sequence. It needs to do this before it actually runs. Oh, that's so fucking sick. Uh, I think it, it should be a little faster though. Uh, oh, okay, the motor has default parameters, so you can just turn those up. Let's try it out now. <laughs> Let's get this. Oh wow! One second. Okay, you just stand. Stand right there. Whoa! It's pretty cool. We just gotta put a few of these shower, so. looks like this. I did the quirky little snap teleportation thing, right? That was three weeks ago. I'm fucking tired. It looks like but you when you were at school. I platform out of aluminum and wood that I stole from my girlfriend's bed frame. It's not like I can go to Home Depot on quarantine. It's just a prototype so I can write and test the software before I build the actual thing. But even the prototype is pretty cool. It's the same idea with the motor carriage on the X axis. Casually stealing his girlfriend's bed. On the Y axis. And on their own, they're just motors. They don't know how to talk to each other. They don't know how to cooperate. But if you write some software that can talk to all the motors, you can make it do pretty much anything you want. This is the homing sequence. It figure outs the bounds of the machine by measuring the amperage of the, of the motor on the motors when they stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make it. You can make it do this shit. It's maybe not as stable as you'd want it to be, but yeah, it's just a prototype. <laughs> so stupid. So I'm controlling it with my mouse right now. It looks jerky and awful, but it's actually got a really good amount of precision to it. It's kind of going in a circle from the top-down view. Like I said, this is not the final surgery robot. It's going to be much more refined, much more medical-looking. This you know, much is more awesome for the user. And all that movement was controlled by the code I wrote. Don't worry, I'm not going to show it. I know everyone thinks it's boring, so we. Psych, I don't give a shit what you think. Look at this <laughs> dynamic uh, bounds detection routine. That's fucking sick. Here's the limits. I mean, that you looks fairly it. simple. Bounds your machine. Yeah, fuck that limit switch. It's cringe. Instead, write some code that steps the motor forward until it starts using a lot of power. Then you know you hit the edge of the rail. And then you know exactly where you are in relation to the balance of the machine. It's fucking sick. Look how cool the code part is, guys. I'm gonna keep going. This part applies the scaling factors that are calculated as a function of the input. 
But Michael, I hear you. <laughs> so you can move the carriage over any part of the operating table you want. Great. But how are you going to move the medical tools up and down to engage with the patient? Well, that's where the carriage utility mechanism comes into play. That's the thing that's going to move the scalpel or the clamp or whatever up and down, which is great. There's just a small problem, slight problem. Well, I built it. I built it, which is a good thing. My original plan was, you know, just to have a thin piece of plastic with a motor attached to it that moves a plate. Easy. But then I fucking, I saw that thing. <laughs> Okay, there's no way that's gonna survive, so I gotta make it a little strong. You know, I may as well make it go a little faster. I got a little carried away, and now it looks like a time bomb, and it weighs 10 fucking pounds. It works great. The motor precisely moves the mounting plate up and down wherever you want it to go. The thing is, I just don't know if those motors can handle 10 pounds, so we're gonna have to do a little test. Michael, why don't you just use the carriage utility mechanism to test it out? Well, it took me a long time to build, and it's fucking beautiful, so cry more. It looks like it's handling small movements pretty well. Why axis action? Okay, that's not that bad. Okay. <laughs> oh, it'll be fine. We can probably just go ahead and make the final version. And it looks like no yet. I did the stupid hand thing no again. Yet. It's been three more weeks. I have severe depression. But Michael, where's the surgery robot? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, big reveal. This is the surgery robot. Massive. Damn. Robot. Huge. I have brain damage. Behold the superior surgery robot, you Da Vinci shitter tins. It's got the cum. It's got the cable management. It's got the super fucking hard to reach driver boards. I don't know why I put them under here. I thought it would look cool. But Michael, does it even work? Does it it work? <laughs> Does it work? I don't know if it works. I haven't turned it on yet. I've been too afraid since it took me so long to build, so I turned the camera on so you can at least see my tears. Also, I've just noticed, if you look on the bottom right, it's got on and less on. <laughs> when it tears itself apart. I'm worried about this shit because when I built it, I went ooga booga caveman brain, metal strong. Metal not strong. Metal more like McDonald's play place trampoline. But you gotta take chances when you're innovating on the next great thing. So I'm gonna turn it on. Oh god, oh please. Yeah, okay. Please don't break it. Yeah. All right, the machine's working. Now we can start to control it. But Michael, where's the controller? Fuck you. You are the controller. I got this VR hand tracking camera off of Amazon that works super goddamn well. So you just take the hand coordinates from this, pipe them in the surgery robot, and bing, bang, boom. That is so fucking cool. <laughs> oh, boom. Fuck you, DaVinci Robotics! You can move my thing with just floating your hand around! Robot, go here. Oh, robot, do surgery here. Oh no, patient bleeding there. Oh, do surgery there, on that part. How about you do surgery over here? Now do surgery over there, and now do surgery- Fuck you, DaVinci! You shitty robot can't do that. You need to squeeze those little metal robot teeth to do yours. Oh shit, before I sell my design to surgeons across the nation, we have to attach some surgical tools to the cum, because otherwise <laughs> it's just a big ass robot. So let's buy a scalpel on Amazon. Wow, that is just unacceptable. Scalpels are gonna take a whole three days. Wow, that's pretty reasonable. Fuck no, that's messed up. Dang global health crisis. That's far too long. If only I had an alternative. You really think about it, scalpels are just shitty, smaller knives. So why don't we just use bigger, better <laughs> knives? Like, uh, hello, we already have those. Wake up, sheeple! <laughs> Are you tired of outdated surgical technology? Are you looking for the cutting edge oh, love power, this. precision, and usability? Look no further. The future of surgical robotics is here. <laughs> Look at the fucking knife! <laughs> Unlike some other surgical systems, we've run a gamut of tests to ensure our machine has Hundred percent so. I'm have a pineapple with oh, fuck, mincing the operation. <laughs> Operate on it. Surgery over here now. Um, patient, small incision. Uh, small incision, we'll move the patient. Commence surgery on the patient. <laughs> the power isn't the only thing we strive for. Precision is an essential tenet of surgery, and we make no exceptions when testing for accuracy. What the fuck is that? Hey, we're gonna do some painting. No, Lily, come on, please. Ah! Oh shit, oh, fuck off. Draw the Mona Lisa. Draw the <laughs> Mona Lisa. Ah! Okay. Oh, look at the paint, look at the paint. Eyes. Oh, That's a little racist looking, Lily. Really. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you... Fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm once you got used to it, you would actually be alright. show how accurate my machine is. <laughs> It'll reach the water. <laughs> Let's see this if you should try to do that. You might be wondering, is the system FDA approved? No. It's not. Surely. But don't just take our word for it. Here's what a real medical professional has to say about this innovative new technology. We're gonna go for like a laparoscopic appendectomy. So if we just make a small incision above the chest here, uh, we can... <laughs> okay. uh, a little bit more difficult for some procedures, but not... You can see you still have a lot more accuracy. 
accurate control than a lot of surgical systems. Oh, fuck. Like I was saying, moving the patient is a lot easier with the system. Like normally you'd have to manually move. Would you, be, uh, would you add this to your hospital? Do you think hospitals could adopt? Uh, seems a little dangerous. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate the feedback. You're wrong. Last but not least, we've made our machines so intuitive that anyone can do surgery with no prior training. So you've never seen this machine before. What does that pokey mean? It's perfect because this study is to I can use that as a tag. Bring someone from zero <laughs> skill level all the way up to the ability of a surgeon. Boot up right in front of, not too close, because it's kind of dangerous. So just put your hand out. <laughs> Could you just put your hand out above the thing? <laughs> Higher up controls the knife position. You can move it further ah, fair. closer and it'll get further away from you. We're gonna make a small incision right above the ear. <laughs> so there's some mistakes, there's some mistakes. Okay, so you're doing it wrong. Oh, shit. Okay, so clearly, well fuck, oh cut, you're clearly doing another incision to stop, plug the hole with the knife. Yeah, yeah, perfect, nice. Yeah, you're perfect. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, this, what's, it's okay, no, it's fine. It's, it's learning. It's a learning experience. Try and retract the knife from the head. Let's, let's just try and get it out of. The... Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Good incision. Ah! If your patient's over here and you don't want them to be over there, move them over here. Do some surgery over here. Move them back. I don't even know what surgery this was supposed to be. Thank you for watching. That concludes <laughs> research and development for my surgical system. If you're a hospital looking to try it out, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube, and maybe, just maybe, I'll let you borrow it for a bit. Remember, stay in school, smoke crack, fuck you Da Vinci Robots, bye. This YouTube video is sponsored by Raycon. Cool, that is... I mean, first off, right? The general idea of that, right? and how easily he managed to put that together. Like, yes, it was not a perfect product, but no products ever are when you first make them. But the fact that like that previous, what was it like 2.6 million they were trying to charge? Like, genius to insanity, there's only one step, hell yeah. Like, well, yeah, Adam, I, you say like it was six weeks, but if you think how long it would take to build the other robots, like fair enough, those robots are a bit more refined, but yeah, that's that's crazy. The fact that some dude in his bedroom can just build build a surgery robot. It's great, Frosters. Thank you for sending that in.